could ask Uga. The Georgia Bulldogs are 4-0 for the first time since 1982, when Herschel Walker's leg led them to their last SEC championship. Now it's the right arm of senior quarterback Mike Bobo that has Georgia thinking of lofty goals. But today, they'll face the test like no other. In the Neyland Stadium, the face Heisman Trophy favorite, Peyton Manning, and the Tennessee Volunteers. The Vols have beaten the dogs six straight years. Can they do it again today? It's Georgia-Tennessee next. NASDAQ College Football on CBS. The team made their customary walk across campus in the Neyland Stadium where over 106,000 fans are all set to see the three and one Tennessee Volunteers against the Georgia Bulldogs. Welcome to NASDAQ College Football on CBS. I'm Gus Johnson along with Mike Mayock. Georgia 4-0 on the season. A landmark game for them. Hey, a win today puts them right in the top 10. And the guy that's got to get them there is their talented tailback, Robert Edwards. He was hurt in his first carry of the season, but came back last week, gained 102 yards, caught five more passes. And Gus, I really believe if they get 100 yards out of the tailback position today, Georgia wins the football game. As for Tennessee, their post-Florida season began last week with a win over Ole Miss. And here's the team led by Peyton Manning. Their heads are still up because there's a lot to play for. You know, there really is. There's certainly an Alliance Bowl opportunity and maybe even more of Florida stumbles. But the way you beat Tennessee is you make them one-dimensional. You stop the run. Now, when that one dimension is Peyton Manning, it means something. But I'll tell you what's going to happen today. They're going after their tailback, Jamal Lewis. He came in last week, first start, 22 carries, 155 yards. Here's his favorite play. Isolation, the guard's going to block down, double team on the center, the tackle breaks out on the defensive end, the key block is on the linebacker. Bryson makes the block, and watch this talented freshman cut back across the game and take it 42 yards for a touchdown. There's the block, the cutback, nobody's going to catch him, and gosh, you'll see that play 15 times today. Georgia, Tennessee, a good old-fashioned SCC showdown. Starting lineups coming up next. And welcome back to Neyland Stadium, 106,000 in attendance this afternoon as Georgia and Tennessee are all set to square off in an SEC matchup. Dwayne Goodrich back deep, and we are underway. Tennessee receiving the football. Goodrich, he'll take it out of the end zone, three yards deep, over the 15-yard line, up to the 20-yard line. And that is where the Volunteers will start Kirby Smart, making the special team tackle a 24-yard return. And Peyton Manning, the quarterback, the Heisman Trophy favorite, has thrown for four straight 300-yard games for Tennessee. He is 31-5 and five as the starting quarterback here in Knoxville, Tennessee. So the Volunteers starting first down and 10 from the 21-yard line, and they open up in the eye formation. Jamal Lewis is the deep back. Already changing a play. Here's Manning. Play fake on first down. He lets it go to the far side. Incomplete. Intended for Marcus Nash, the leading receiver on this team. And for Tennessee, a look at their backs and receivers. Marcus Nash, 31 receptions on the season so far. He's averaging about seven per game. And up front on the offensive line, this line has been criticized, but last week opened up some big holes for Jamal Lewis, 155 yards rushing for the true freshman tailback from Atlanta. Second down and 10 from the 21 for Manning. Out of the offset eye, Lewis the deep back once again. And Manning changing the play at the line of scrimmage. 
He got it away. Here's the stop. Lewis trying to get around the corner. He does. And he's trying to get around at the 25 yard line. Ronald Bailey with the tackle from the right quarterback position. Now, defensively for Georgia, they run a 3 4 up front. Very solid. Rather a 4 3 up front. Very solid. Selling Scott, Bird, and Robich. And the linebackers, Greg Wright is in the middle, had 12 tackles last week against Mississippi State, 11 solos, and in the secondary, Champ Bailey, Ronald Bailey, they're both brothers. They say Champ Bailey could be one of the best to leave Georgia by the time he's done in Athens. Third down and four from the 27. Let's see how much confidence they have in the run game. Nope. Here's Manning looking over the middle, got away, and it's complete. Over the 30-yard line, up to the 33-yard line, O.G. Grant making the tackle, and Tennessee comes up with the first down. When you're averaging 48 attempts per game, third and four becomes a pass play. What happens is number 31, the tailback, Jamal Lewis, just slips through, catches the football. Aranthus Grant makes the tackle, but not before Lewis gets the first down. So first down and 10 now for Tennessee from the 33. Manning once again audibling at the line of scrimmage. Marcus Nash to the near side. They fake it. Manning steps up, got it away, and a lot of pressure on Peyton Manning. Brandon Dolbert was there to grab him, but Manning got it away. Both Tolbert and the nose guard, number 66, Travis Stroud, who's right here, are going to get the pressure on the quarterback. Play action fake, Talbert from the top, he flushes him back inside, and that's a great play by Brandon Talbert, their senior outside linebacker. That'll make it second down and 10 from the 33. Gus, he's changed every play so far at the line of scrimmage. Short drop this time to the near side, Marcus Nash with the football. And he's tackled immediately, Jeff Bailey, the sophomore from folks in Georgia, stepping up and making a hit. I think that's the one thing that Peyton Manning does better than any college quarterback I've ever seen, and that is his pre-snap read. He'll take what you give him. If you're gonna, if you're gonna lay off the, on the corner, he'll take three-step drop and hit for five yards every time. Last year against Georgia, Peyton Manning threw for 371 yards, two touchdowns, no interception. Andy McCullough. And Jermaine Copeland split wide to the far side. Yeah. Here's Manning once again. It seems like he's calling <laughs> the entire game from the line of scrimmage. Four wide receivers in the game, one back. Flushed out of the pocket to his right on the run. Got it away, complete. At the 40-yard line, big reception. Kirby Smart making the tackle. But Mark Levine with a 24-yard grab. Gus, that's a play we saw in practice the other day, a little wheel route where they're trying to get the, the wide receiver. In this case, it's actually a tailback. Mark Levine runs a wheel route, good protection, and now Peyton buys time. Levine breaks the route. He was actually out of bounds, and Peyton leads him back towards the center of the field. That's a senior quarterback understanding what the defense has, and a good job by Levine finding a soft place. Levine, a junior from Dallas, Texas. First down from the Georgia 40-yard line. Here's Lewis straight ahead, sidestepping a defender, and he'll get down to the 35-yard line. The middle linebacker, Greg Wright, stepping up and making the hit. So Jamal Lewis, a true freshman from Atlanta, Georgia, last week, 155 yards rushing on 22 carries. Said he wasn't nervous. Good job by Bryson right in here. He's going to get the block on Tolbert coming in here, and that's what happens. Here comes the block right on Tolbert, the cut, and that's why you make five or six yards because your fullback's willing to block people. Eighth play of the drive that started on the 21-yard line for Tennessee. Second down and five. Play fake again. Manning rolling. Pump fake. He ducks it at the 30, and he'll scamper out of bounds inside the 25. Champ Bailey there to usher him out of bounds. But Peyton Manning showing the good wheels. He picks up nine. Good decision, man-to-man -man coverage, which means the defensive backs have their backs turned when they, what's gonna happen is the play fake comes this way. Peyton's gonna come around, the deep wide receivers are running them off, and it's wide open in here for Peyton. Watch what happens, the play fake comes front side. 
Now Peyton runs out. The defensive backs, backs are turned. It's wide open in the middle of the field. He wisely tucks it and gets what he can. First down from the Georgia 24. Short drop, Manning, quick fire, Copeland with the catch, turns it upfield and gets inside the 15. Jermaine Copeland, a backup quarterback, one of the best all-around athletes on this team. What I mean, look at how far off the D-back is. He'll take it all day. Manning could now break a tackle. Copeland does a good job getting away from Jeff Harris, and outside linebacker Arantis Grant has to come over and make the play. I've never seen a quarterback recognize what he can take from a defense pre-snap better than Peyton Manning. Another first down for the Volunteers. He's drive started on their own 21. Now from the Georgia 14. Out of the eye. Here's Lewis hitting the backfield, and he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. Derek Bird, first contact. He's a senior from Fox Springs, Georgia. For the first time today, they had a tight end in the ball game, and that means they want to run the football when they put a tight end. You're going to see the block here and the fullback here, and watch Stroud and Derek Bird penetration. Talbert will come in from the outside. That's a good play right there by the Georgia defense. So far, Manning on this drive, 4 of 6, 43 yards. There's Bird. He's at operations on both knees. They say he's playing on just bone and socket. <laughs> Tough kid. Second down and 12. Manning looking in the air to the near side. It's complete to his fullback, Sean Bryson. But Bryson wrapped up immediately. Brandon Tolbert making the tackle. And I really like Brandon Tolbert. Had a chance to see him play last year. He was a high school safety that they made into a linebacker. He's gotten bigger, stronger, and I think he's one of the most consistent linebackers in the SEC. Doesn't get the notoriety of some of the Leonard Littles, but he's every bit as consistent. So Tennessee, their first possession of the game, they are knocking on the door. Third down and 10 from the Georgia 13. Lewis the lone setback, four receiver package in the game for the Volunteers. Manning looking in the end zone, touchdown. Marcus Nash. Down of the season for the senior from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Where well, they anticipated man-to-man -man coverage and they got it. And I'll tell you, Marcus Nash left the guy holding his helmet, wondering where he went. And Jeff Hall coming in to attempt the extra point. It is good. Ten minutes, two seconds remaining here in the first quarter of play, and Tennessee gets on the board first. Marcus Nash, man-to-man, -man, takes his guy inside, then back out to the corner. The ball thrown on time, right in the hands. Great play with Marcus Nash. Watch him work inside. That's the key. He turns around Kirby Smart, and he's going to run away from Kirby Smart all day long. That's a mismatch. And here's a potential Heisman Trophy winner. Five steps, get rid of the football on time. Can't be delivered any better. We've got a 7-0 ball game. Peyton Manning hit five different receivers on a 79-yard drive. Tennessee goes on top 7 to nothing on the touchdown. Manning to Marcus Nash. I think he's talking to Archie there. <laughs> so Jeff Hall getting ready to send it away. Hines, Ward, Champ Bailey back deep for Georgia. And this will be Ward five yards in his own end zone. And he will take a move. Now let's go downstairs to the third member of our team, Dave Logan. All right, all right, Gus, thank you very much. Just moments before the kickoff, I talked to Georgia coach Dim Donovan. I told him, what's the key to this game? And he said they're approaching it like a young kid with a picture puzzle. They've worked on the border. That would be the first four games of the season. Now they need that big piece in the middle to get a better picture. That would be Tennessee. If they can get the big picture in the middle, then they know what kind of season they could or could not have. Gus, back to you. All right, Dave, and the big piece of the puddle for puzzle for Georgia is Mike Bobo, and here's a young man that's number one in the conference in passing. He's third in college football in passing efficiency. We have a personal foul. 
against the orange team. We have a personal foul against the white team. The offset, first down at the 20. And that is one thing that Tennessee wants to stay away from. They had four personal fouls last week against Ole Miss. Yeah, and they had 10 penalties total, Gus, and to, to juxtapose that with Georgia, they've had eight penalties the entire season. Tennessee had more in one game. All right, Mike Bobo, number one in the conference in passing, third in the nation in passing efficiency, and he's pretty much experienced it all here at the University of Georgia. He's been injured, he's been booed, he's been benched, a little bit of everything, but turn it out a good year so far. Now let's go back to Jim Nance in New York for an update. All right, guys, what well, Tennessee put together a nice opening drive. Watch what Notre Dame did at the opening of this game. Alan Rossum finally fields it at the seventh, and the Fighting Irish kick returner will race 93 yards for a touchdown on the opening kick. Last year, when Notre Dame pounded Pittsburgh, they returned three punts for touchdowns. Today, it's the opening kick. 7-0 Notre Dame, but Pitt is coming back with a drive of its own in Notre Dame territory. Back to Gus and Mike. All right, Jim. First down and 10 from the 20-yard line. Out of the wishbone, here's Hines Ward running over the right side, and he will be stacked up for a loss. There is that Tennessee swarming defense. Corey Noel, Terry Fair in on the play. <laughs> How about Jim Donnan coming out in the formation they haven't used all year, which is a wishbone and two wide receivers as the running back. As you look at Corey Noel, a senior from Memphis, Jim Donnan, one of the most creative coaches in the country, had a great career at Marshall. Had his roots at Oklahoma, where he was familiar with wishbone. Second down and 10 from the 20-yard line. A lot of motion. Twin receivers to both sides of the field for Bobo. Plenty of time over the middle, and it's gone. Hines Ward at the 35, broke the tackle, and drives his way up to the 45-yard line. at the gain of 25. Probably the most fun single player in the country is Heinz Ward right there. The original slash. He's played quarterback. He's played wide receiver. He's played running back. And in this case, you get Mike Bobo. Watch his arm here. A little better than people think. Ward runs about a 14-yard dig across the middle. The ball is delivered on time in his hand. And when he gets the football, folks, he can go the distance. Corey Allen, Tony Small split wide to the far side. Ward to the near side. Here's Bobo. Changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Robert Edwards straight ahead. Big the hole. Edwards breaking it down. Finish inside the 30-yard line. And they are breaking out the heavy artillery early on in this game. That's a pickup of 28 yards. That's why we isolated Robert Edwards in our pregame show. Was hurt the first three games of this year. Came back last week. Watch him make a safety miss right in the hole. That Corey Gaines, their best tackler. He runs away from Leonard Little. He throws off Wayne Goodrich. He is a great young running back. First down and 10 from the Tennessee 27. Georgia on their first offensive possession. Edwards again. Side steps a defender, Raynock Thompson, and will take a negative and get positive yards out the play. Leonard Little, the middle linebacker, making the tackle. And offensively for the Bulldogs, last week Robert Edwards, his first real action of the season after having an injured ankle, 102 yards rushing. And up front, Matt Stitchcomb is their best offensive lineman, along with Ingram, Stafford, Fleming, and Terry. Second down and six. New running backs in the game with Pass and Gary. This is their quick set. Ward in motion, play action, Bobo, and he gets blitzed from the back side. Jonathan Brown, a senior from Tulsa, his fourth sack of the season. That'll be a loss of six yards. This play looked doomed from the very beginning. Just a half a step off. Hines Ward comes across in motion, and they're going to do a little play action from the top of your screen. Nobody touches defensive end Jonathan Brown. He's their best defensive end. And I'll tell you right now, Gus, if you want to throw the football against these guys, you better block Jonathan Brown. Third down and a long 12. Bobo out of the gun. Looking far side and complete. Intended for Hines Ward, however, Dwayne Goodrich standing right on the play. 
Now defensively for Tennessee, Jonathan Brown, he's their big rush in, can play either side, leads the team in sacks now with four of the linebackers. Leonard Little, Al Wilson, two of the best in the country. They both run four fives. And Dwayne Goodrich last week against Ole Miss returned an interception for a touchdown. Terry Fair on the other side returns after sitting out last week because of an injured shoulder. So they bring on Hap Hines to attempt a 47-yard field goal. Ooh. Line drive, no good. Georgia coming up empty. Tennessee leads it 7-0. 6.41 to go in the first quarter of play. Tennessee on top 7 to nothing. I'm Gus Johnson along with Mike Mayock. Great atmosphere down here in Knoxville, <laughs> Tennessee. And both these teams offensively moving the football. Yeah, they really are, Gus. I mean, if you want to watch two teams play, number one, you want to see Peyton Manning just because of the offensive magnific magnificence of him. But Georgia, you've already seen Wishbone, four wives, three wives. They throw the kitchen sink. We're going to have some fun today. So Georgia coming up empty on their first possession offensively of the game. They got well inside Tennessee territory but came up with a zero six minutes 41 seconds to go here in the first quarter Tennessee now with the ball first down at their own 30 Manning short drop pump fade throwing the fade and McCullough got it and McCullough tiptoes out of bounds at the Georgia 35 at the gain of 33 Gus, when you run a lot of three-step drop, what happens is guys like Jeff Harris, number 13, want to jump the out real fast. Now McCullough turns it up. He can't get his hands on him. Look where this football is delivered. You can't do it any better if you just walked out and handed it to him. That's a great pitch and a great catch. Andy McCullough, a senior from Dayton, Ohio. He's been trying to work on his consistency. He's got 11 catches on the year. First down and 10 from the 36 for the Volunteer. Here's Lewis. Over the right side, broke a tackle, kept his feet going, Lewis, pretty towards the end zone, and he's dragged out from behind at the five. The true freshman out of Atlanta. This is a play we highlighted in our open for Tennessee. It's an isolation. The fullback Bryson makes a good block right there at the point of attack, and then the outside cut, he runs through the tackle of Kirby Smart, at 6'1", 230 pounds, this 18-year-old is a load. He can go. Last week, making his first career start, he became the first volunteer to rush for 100 yards in nine games, and he gets him down to the Georgia 6. Out of the offset eye. Here's the play action fake. Manning pumping in the end zone. Intercepted! It's Bailey with the interception in the end zone, and Georgia dodges a bullet. There's a situation where, look at Philip Fulmer, where Peyton Manning tried to make too much out of a play. I think if he tucks it down and tries to run it in, watch what happens here. Good play action fake. Peyton puts it on his hip. He's looking in the corner of his end zone right now, and then it's a great job by Champ Bailey turning his back on Manning and then reacting to it. He's on Marcus Nash. He knows he's got a follow in everywhere. He's got a 42-inch vertical leap, and he shows it right there. Peyton Manning throwing his sixth interception of the season, a costly one, on the last drive in the end zone for Champ Bailey. So Georgia starts first down and 10 from their own 20. Here's the delayed hand off. Robert Edwards slicing through the line of scrimmage, and he'll pick up five, possibly six yards on the play. What Leonard happened? Little making the tackle. What happens here is it's play action. Manning comes out here, and it's all Marcus Nash working on Bailey. He tries to get open, then he works the back of the end zone. Tight end drags across. Manning's looking for either one, but the individual play of number four, Champ Bailey, just showcases his athletic ability. Turns his back, elevates, makes the catch. Boy, that's something right there. They say Champ Bailey could end up one of the best to ever play at Georgia. He's only a sophomore. Second down and two from the 28. And they run it straight ahead once again for a first down. Patrick Pass. And let's check in with Jim Nance in New York. 
Uh, Gus, it looks like Notre Dame's letting out a lot of frustration here early against Pittsburgh. You saw the kick return earlier. The next possession after Notre Dame stopped Pittsburgh deep in Notre Dame territory. Autry Denson races 50 yards for a touchdown. Two Irish touchdowns in the first six and a half minutes. 14-0 Notre Dame. Let's go back to Gus and Mike. You know, Gus, maybe that, uh, that big win against Miami wasn't as good as people thought for Pittsburgh a few weeks ago. And you had the feeling that Notre Dame would eventually start getting things going. Here's Bobo, and he has his receiver, Corey Allen, on the slant pattern. And Mike Bobo and this entire Georgia offense, a lot of short stuff, but very efficient. One of the most creative offenses in the country. Here's a little isolation. Corey Allen's working on Dwayne Goodrich. Does a good job selling him outside. And Bobo, what he does, he's not the most talented passer in the, in the SEC, but he is the most efficient. He throws the football on time and he throws it well short, and that's exactly what you saw there on the slant pass. And they are close to a first down. Last week, Mike Bobo completed 26 passes for career-high three touchdowns against Mississippi State. And Ooh. the big game today, Ohio State, Penn State, Nittany Lions at Beaver Stadium leading it 10-3. to And Auburn pulling away from Louisiana Tech. Tech almost beat them last year. I believe it was a 16-14 game, kind of a wake-up call for Coach Bowden's crew last year. Bill Fulmer, the head coach of Tennessee, said they have put the Florida game behind them because there's still a whole lot to play for. Here's the handoff. Patrick Pass skipping through the hole. He gets into the secondary, spinning and tumbling down inside the 45-yard line. Patrick Pass, a gain of 14 for the sophomore from Tucker, Georgia. Great job. The left side of the line, Stinchcomb 79, Herndon 73, create the hole. But look at all the missed tackles. There's one right there by Fair. There's a poor attempt by Torrey Noel. And Patrick Pass is just running through those arm tackles. And this Georgia team really good at running the football. They average 204 yards rushing per game. First down and 10 from the UT 44. Pass again over the right side, and he's cut down. Raynock Thompson grabbing him around the feet. And don't forget, coming up next week, we've got a doubleheader here on CBS Sports. Miami and Boston College, NASDAQ College football. Both teams struggling. And that game will be in Boston and Florida and Auburn promising to be a barn burner. And that's that college football. How many great quarterbacks are there in the SEC? It's mind-boggling. You look at Damian Craig, Johnson, the guys today. Here's Bobo to the near side. Ward with the catch. Foul. Makes two, three people miss before finally being tackled at the 30-yard line. John Brown coming up with the hit. That's a gain of 12. Tennessee better start tackling people if there's going to be a big game soon. Watch what happens here with Hines Ward. Only runs 4-5-5, but one of the quickest guys in the country. He first he's going to make Goodrich miss. Now watch the <laughs> Raynock Thompson gets an armful, and then here comes the rest of the troops. If they don't start tackling better, somebody's going to break one for a touchdown. Hines Ward, a preseason All-American, could become the first player in conference history to go over 1,000 yards in rushing, receiving, kick returning, and as well as passing. Here's the inside handoff. Edwards trying to bounce it off side, still on his feet, and he spins his way down inside the 20. Right now, Mike, Georgia just shredding this Tennessee defense. That's another game of 13. Well, Jim Don and the head coach, Chris Selfo, the assistant head coach and offensive line coach, both told us they think they can run the football right at this Tennessee team. Once again, left side of the line, that's Stinchcomb and Herndon, and watch the missed tackle right there by Al Wilson, their best tackler. Hey, look at these guys are just running through arm tackles, and Gus, I've got to be honest with you, I haven't seen Tennessee step up and go shoulder and shoulder yet on a tackle. Robert Edwards, four carries, 54 yards. First down and 10 from the 17. Edwards again. And another opening, this time over the left side. And he will stumble ahead to the 11. Robert Edwards in 95 switched to tailback from cornerback. And he rushed for 325 yards and six touchdowns in the first two games against South Carolina. And this Tennessee squad, he broke his foot and hadn't been the same back since. 
but as we talked to him yesterday, Mike, he really feels that he's healthy and ready to play. Yeah, he said last week he gained 102 yards, but wasn't at full strength and had his best week of practice getting ready for this game. Second down and five. Here's the pitch. Pass. Running to the short side, and the Tennessee defense strings that one out pretty nicely. Al Wilson there to usher him out of bounds. Sean Ellis, the defensive end, did a nice job on the lead block, allowed Wilson to come in and clean up. This is critical right now. Look, rushing yards, Georgia running right at this Tennessee club, but we're in the red zone right now. You can't lose opportunities in the red zone. They were down here on the first possession, took a bad sack. Big play, 34-5 from about the 12. They got the posse, three wide receivers in the ball game. Split backfield, this is a pass set right here. Bobo in the end zone, and it's broken up. Tory Noel coming over and breaking that class up at the last minute, preventing Hyde Ward from scoring. And that's a touchdown if Mike Bobo leads him further to the middle of the field. Watch Hines Ward. He's going to take it to the post. He's got inside position. If you lead him, then the defender cannot get his arm in there. I give the defender, Tory Noel, a great deal of credit. But if Bobo puts it out in front, that's a touchdown. So they bring on the kicking team. As Hap Hines, off the mark is first try in to attempt a 29-yarder. This time, it's good. Hap Hines came into the season, into this game rather, two for three. Right now, 7-3 Tennessee. A minute 34 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. Georgia getting on the board. 29-yard field goal from Hap Hines. And Tennessee leads it 7-3 as Peyton Manning and company get ready to come back on the field. And this is Mark Levine. He'll take the knee. And Tennessee will start from their own 20. A lot of competition in the SEC East. Florida. 3-0, but Georgia and Tennessee right behind them. A win today against this Tennessee volunteer team will really give the uh, Bulldogs a lot of motivation getting ready to go to Jacksonville to play Florida. That's November 1st, and then you flip over to the Western Division. Auburn at 3-0, LSU with a big game tonight against Florida, and the question I have is can anybody in this conference challenge Florida? Marcus Nash flips wide to the far side. Copeland, peerless price to the near side. Manning to the sideline. He's got Nash. Turns it upfield and gets over the 30. Up to the 32, a gain of 12. Busy day for Jim Nance in New York. All right. <laughs> All right there, Jim. Jim obviously has not seen us play golf. <laughs> Especially me. <laughs> yeah, but you're smart. You're a pretty you're good even player. Try. Exactly. No, you don't even I'm more try. You're smart. Guy. Yeah. Under a minute to go in the first quarter of play. Tennessee leading Georgia seven to three. But Georgia, they've been inside the UT 30-yard line twice. On Tennessee's last offensive possession, Manning threw an interception from the six-yard line. Second down and eight from the 34. Underneath, and it is caught. At the 45-yard line, Peerless Price making the reception. Jeff Harris, a backup cornerback there to make the tackle. It's a gain of 11. Well, Jeff Harris is their nickel back, and whenever Tennessee is in three wides and two backs, they're going to go with the nickel package. So Jeff Harris will play most of the game today, but they've been picking on him a little bit today. Peerless Price in April suffered a broken right leg in the orange and white scrimmage. He's still in the 100%. Hadn't been able to work on that timing with Peyton Manning. But as the season has gone on, he's gotten a whole lot better. First down from the 47. Manning looking to his left. Got it to Lewis out of the backfield. Shake and bake. Split a defender. And got inside the 50 down to the 45. Dustin Lucky with the tackle. And that is the end of the first quarter of play with the score, Tennessee leading Georgia 7-3.
Jim Donnan, the head coach of Georgia, what a tremendous job he's done in a short amount of time. Five and six last year, got it turned around against Auburn and 4-0 and already. Second down and two, here's Lewis cutting it back across field. And he'll jitterbug his way inside the 40. Gain of six. Jim Donnan, six years he spent at Marshall. He won the 1AA National Championship in 1992. And he was the 1AA Coach of the Year in 92 and 95. He was 45-4 and four at home, Gus, and he had four consecutive home games this year, and you know he enjoyed that. Right now, Lewis enjoying a good day running the football. Five carries, 46 yards. Manning underneath. Price with the catch at the 25, and he'll be chopped down to 24. But Manning putting the ball on the money. Jeff Harris with the tackle, but a gain of 15. Picking on Jeff Harris again, the nickelback. Peerless Price, who they think can be a big play guy in the mode of Joey Kent's going to run away from Harris. The ball's delivered right on time. That's pitch and catch. That's like working out in the summer if Harris is going to leave him that much cushion. So Price will split wide to the bottom of your screen, and he's guarded by Harris once again. Lewis. And he'll get to the 20-yard line. Brandon Tolbert in on the play for the Bulldogs. Tennessee's had a little trouble in the red zone this year. We talked to uh, offensive coordinator David Cutcliffe. A little frustrated. Last week they threw an interception. 13 possessions. They've scored 11 times, but they've only got 54% touchdowns. You can see that's below the average. And for a high-scoring attack like that, this, that's not good enough. Second down at six from the 20. Nash to the far side. Price to the near side. Here's Lewis, and he will be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Derek Bird submarined in and made the initial contact. They called Derek Bird their bandit right down here, the defensive end. They've got a tight end in the game. He defeats the block, comes off it to the inside. Great quickness by Derek Bird, and that sets up a key third down situation in the red zone. Remember, the first time in the red zone, touchdown. The second time, interception. This is where you win and lose football games. Derek Bird, a true warrior on that Georgia team, playing with a bad knee. They send trips to the far side, twins to the near side. Empty backfield for Manning. He stumbles, looking over the middle. Nash with the catch at the 10, and he'll get down to the six. 14-yard gain for Marcus Nash. Nice job waiting for Nash to come open. And the middle linebacker, Greg Bright, stumbled trying to cover the talented wide receiver. Trips to the top. Nash comes underneath. Manning waits and waits and waits. And you can see right there, Greg Bright trips. It's tough enough to carry Mar to cover Marcus Nash when you're healthy and running well, but not when you trip. We have an illegal formation on the offensive team. And then they caught the ball. to have seven men on the line of scrimmage and only the outside guys on the line of scrimmage are eligible that time Marcus Nash was covered by it someone outside of him therefore he became an ineligible receiver and penalties continue to plague Tennessee this season so the second penalty of the game called against Tennessee and instead of having the ball at the six yard line they march it all the way back and Tennessee will get it at the 25. Look at Philip Fulmer. It's only a five-yard penalty. Look at Fulmer. He can't believe it. He's saying, no way. He can't call it. He wants to, he's going to talk to him. He's going to call a timeout just to talk to the side judge. 12 minutes, 36 seconds remaining here in the second quarter play. Georgia trailing Tennessee 7-3. He just wants a five-yard penalty after the play. He doesn't want the distance. Aster Sizemore is the referee. He is the man in the white hat. The head coach is allowed to challenge an official rule, not an interpret, excuse me, not 
a judgment call, but an interpretation of a rule. And if you lose, you're charged a timeout. In this case, he already took a timeout because he wanted to challenge it. What Fulmer is saying is you can penalize his five yards, but you can't take the distance also away from the game. There's Coach Fulmer. Sixth year at Tennessee, 46 and 10. Second winningest active coach in college football. See, what happens is right here is Nash, and up top, this guy's up on the line of scrimmage also. If you have somebody that covers you on the outside, you become an ineligible receiver, and in that case, it's a good call. The question Fulmer has is, did the referee make the right interpretation of the call? And, Gus, you called it exactly right. Instead of first and goal on the six. Illegal touching. Still five-yard penalty, and the loss of down, so it'll be fourth down. So Coach Fulmer did not win that battle, and he can't believe it. So they bring the field goal unit on, jump ball. It'll be a 42-yard attempt. Ball spotted at the 32. And it's good. 12.31 to go here in the second quarter of play, 10-3 Tennessee. Jump ball, line drive, and this one heads out of the end zone. Remember now, in college football, you've got to have seven men on the line of scrimmage, and only the end man on each side is eligible. So what you have is five linemen here, six right here, seven right here, eight right here. He's ineligible automatically because this man outflanks him. Marcus Nash is going to run the in route. Peyton waits for him to come open. Illegal formation, and Gus, instead of first and goal on the six, they end up with a 42-yard field goal. That, that's a hefty penalty to pay. Jeff Hall nailing the 42-yarder, but the point is they did not get an opportunity for six more points. So Georgia now from their own 20. Bobo, under pressure, steps up. Got it away, and it's complete at the 30-yard line. Derek Brown is tied in. Still on his feet, and he'll get up to the 50. What a run by the junior from Decatur. That's a gain of 31. <laughs> oh, man. 6'5", 250. I cannot believe the way George is running through arm tackles here. Bobo does an excellent job in recognition, looking front side, waits for Brown to clear the linebacker, Comes over late. Now watch what happens. Raynock Thompson right through the poor arm tackle. Now run somebody over, Larry. There you go. He runs right over number 30, Corey Gaines. Huge play again for Georgia. Ninth catch of the season for Brown. He was a part-time basketball player for the Bulldogs as well. Edwards at the 40. See you later. Touchdown, Georgia, 49 yards. We knew at the top of the show that Georgia felt they could run the football right at this club. And I said if they gain 100 yards on the ground, they're going to win the game. Watch number 70, Chris Curry, offensive tackle, pulls, gets a seal block on Leonard Little, the cutback like all great backs do. And now he's just going to run away from people. Robert Edwards with a huge play, great blocking up front. Half Hines coming in to attempt the extra point. And it's good. Robert Edwards, we've got 11 minutes and 47 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Six carries, 103 yards. CBS Sports coverage of NASDAQ College Football will continue after this message and a word from your local station. 49-yard touchdown jump by Robert Edwards, the senior from Tindall, Georgia. And we are tied up at 10 apiece here in Knoxville. Mark Levine will field it in the end zone, and he'll step out of bounds. Tennessee will start from the 20. Every great run starts with a key block. The right tackle, Chris Terry, is going to pull and then seal Leonard Little, who comes from the inside. Watch what happens. Here comes Terry. Little comes slicing inside, and right there, 
That creates the seam and allows him to cut it back. Good block on Little. There's the cutback, and at this point, nobody's going to catch him. That's a great play by Chris Terry, Robert Edwards, and that entire Georgia offense. And Robert Edwards criticized last year, fumbled the ball six times, battled through all kinds of injuries, thought about going to the NFL, but he and Hyde Ward got together and said, hey, we have a chance to go to a bowl game. Let's stay in college and play one more year. Quick screen, Copeland at the 20, cut it back inside, got up to the 25-yard line before he was gang tackled. Now, Sunday, beginning at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time, CBS Sports rolls into the fast lane with one of NASCAR's hottest events. The series diehard 500, defending champion and overall points leader Jeff Gordon leads the pack, followed by Mark Martin, Dale Jarrett, Jeff Burton, Dale Earnhardt, and many more. The series diehard 500, live from Talladega, Sunday here on CBS. Second down and five from the 25. Lewis. Cut it up at the 40. Still on his feet. Got it outside. And Lewis dragged down at the 45. <laughs> you are seeing two tailbacks selling out on the field this afternoon. And you know what? They're very similar tailbacks. 6'1", 6'2", 230 pounds. Great steps in the hole. Real strong player. Look at the block. Left guard does a great job. That was Spencer Riley. And watch the cutback right here. Run through the arm tackle. All the way to the sideline where Jeff Harris and Arantis Grant bring him down. Gus, two wonderful tailbacks. This is a fun game. That was a gain of 31. He's got eight carries for 81 yards. Play action. Manning winding up. In the speed of the blue. Dangerous pass for Peyton Manning. Looking for Jermaine Copeland. He threw it between two defenders, Champ Bailey and Larry Mann. And you've got to have confidence in your arm to throw this football because it was double coverage. Watch Tolbert, 28, turn and run with Copeland. So he's got underneath. There's a safety over top. That ball was put right there, but I think Tolbert got a piece of it. That's a good look at it right there. You got the safety, Bailey, over the top, and uh, Tolbert underneath. That's really good coverage. Second down and 10. Draw play. Lewis again with an opening. Runs the daylight. He's got plenty of it. Ooh. And he'll be tackled at the 27. But another huge game. This time, 16 yards for the true freshman out of Atlanta. Hey, if I'm David Cutcliffe and Philip Fulmer, I'm running this play an awful lot. Watch what happens inside that offensive line pass set, lead draw, the cutback by Lewis, runs through the tackle of Bright, and at this point, Orantis Grant coming in late, Gus. This is just a physical, tough football game with two exceptional tailbacks. First down from the 28. Manning to Levine out of the backfield, and Levine is... Wrapped up at the 21. Kirby Smart, Champ Bailey converging on the tackle. Mark Levine, a junior from Dallas, Texas, is a tailback, but they line him up at wide receiver. Yeah, they give him, the, they bring him out to make it look like four wides. Champ Bailey lays way off, and that's where I told you Peyton Manning will take that three-step drop in the five-yard game, give your guy an opportunity to break a tackle and make it into a bigger game. He'll take it every day of the week. Andy McCullough slips to the bottom of your screen. Fearless Price. The top of your screen, out of the eye. Here's a handoff, Levine skipping through the defense, and he'll get inside the 15. Greg Bright making the tackle for Georgia, and it's a gain of eight. They've got it going on the ground. Spencer Riley, the left guard, is going to pull right out in front. Watch Riley come around, and the lead block by the fullback. Levine seven yards deep. Good blocking up front. He goes north and south. I really like the way Tennessee's got it going on the ground here. And if they can continue that, it's going to open up play action for Peyton Manning. Seventh play of the drive for the Volunteers. First down from the Georgia 14. Manning in the end zone. Oh. Complete. Nash, the intended receiver, and Peyton may have let him <laughs> just a hair too much. But that's okay. There's no free safety in the hole there. When there's no free safety, if you're going to make a mistake, it's going to be to the inside of the field. Nash is working on Champ Bailey, the best corner, with good coverage. Oh, Marcus, you have to extend for that football. 
You know, he leaned, but I think you go in the you go out and extend. Here's David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator, told me one of the things Peyton does best is recognize when there's free, no free safety, he goes right for the jugular and tries to throw the post cut. Second down and 10 from the 14. This time, Levine cutting it across the field, and he'll be tackled from behind. Trey Sykes drags him down at the nine-yard line. <laughs> you can see the difference when Levine's in the game versus Jamal Lewis. Levine wants to get outside. He wants to get wide and use his speed. Now, if Jamal's in there, he's going to make somebody pay. And he talked about that yesterday. He loved running between the tackles. I asked him his favorite play. He just grinned and said, Iso. <laughs> And you know what? Every great tailback loves ISO because they're seven yards deep. They're north and south with a great opportunity to cut it back. Red zone opportunity, third down. And four from the nine. Three receivers at the bottom of your screen. Manning. And he has Oh, man. Wow. Cedric Wilson, a true freshman from Jackson, Tennessee, with his first collegiate touchdown. And folks, that's why Peyton Manning is the best college quarterback in the country. I don't know how he thread the needle there. So Jeff Hall in to attempt the extra point. So Manning and company, they answer as they storm right down the field and score. One, two, three, four, five step. Good protection. Now, zone coverage by Georgia. Watch how he threads it in between sight. Wow, and bright. That is an incredibly difficult throw. Three safeties in the hole. Kirby Smart, good job coming underneath. Cedric Wilson does an excellent job. 8.02 to go, and the Tennessee coaches, that's all right with them. <laughs> all right, Jim, right behind Peyton Manning is the true freshman Cedric Wilson, number 14. Prior to this year, had never played wide receiver before, was a high school quarterback. He got his first college touchdown moments ago, a nine yard. Here's Ward from inside the five. Ward. Almost broke it big. He gets up to the 25-yard line. A 21-yard return. Hey, if Fred White doesn't make the tackle there, that, that Heinz Ward's still running. So the last drive for Tennessee, nine plays, covering 80 yards. And they held the ball for three minutes and 45 seconds as the Georgia offense comes back onto the field here in front of 106,000 at Neyland Stadium. And they are pumped up here. It's a great football game. First down to 10 from the 26. They fake the reverse. Bobo looking underneath. He's got a receiver. It's Allen, and he's written down from behind at the 46-yard line. That's a gain of 21. When you run the ball successfully, play action opens up. Georgia's already gained 122 yards on the ground. Play action, the fake. Bobo comes off, and the crossing receiver is Corey Allen. Bobo with the maturity to wait for him to come open. Corey Gaines has got to react late, and you just have to love the scheme of the Georgia offense. Jim Don, and not only the head coach, but he calls the play. As we take a look around college football, Arizona State leading FC. Bobo under pressure, John Brown. And Big John Brown with his second sack of the game. The senior from Booker T. Washington High School in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay, Jonathan Brown right here leaves the tight end, which should be a good match. He comes right around here to the quarterback. Tight end Larry Brown's got to do a much better job, Gus. He's a basketball player. He showed me no feet right there, but Jonathan Brown did it. Brown on Brown, but that time the advantage is Tennessee. Five sacks on the season so far for the senior from Tulsa. Loss of three on the play. Second down and 13 from the 45. And we will get a flag, and it looks like it'll go against Georgia.
A lot of pointing going on down there. Let's take a look at Coach Donnie. At a dead ball, illegal movement on the offensive line, be five yards, and pick first down. Looks like it may have been high Ward. You know what, Gus? They had it going. They got the big, big first down play on play action. Then they take a bad sack. Now you get a penalty. These are the little things you can't afford to have happen. And Jim Donnan knows this when you're playing a club like Tennessee. And under George Donnan, this Georgia team very well disciplined. Eight penalties in four games coming into this game. Second down and 18 from their own 40. To the near side, Brown to tie in with the catch. And he takes a lick from Ray Knox Johnson before being brought down by Dwayne Goodrich at the gain of eight yards. Yeah. As opposed to Tennessee, whose tight ends have no reception, the Georgia tight ends had 14 coming into the game, and that's because they're athletes. This guy's a basketball player on the Georgia basketball team. Great athlete. He can get down the field vertically. Brown hit the game-winning shot against Arkansas in the SEC quarterfinals. Did 18 against South Carolina. He can play a little bit. Third down and nine. Bad snap. Bobo fortunate enough to catch the football. You know, Gus, that was a good job actually by the center because the defensive end jumped offside and the center recognized that with his peripheral vision and automatically snapped it, getting five yards. That's Jonathan Brown jumping offside. Jonathan Brown looking for a little head start to get to the quarterback in a pass situation. Brad Stafford, the senior center from Georgetown, South Carolina. Right offside on the defense. Five yard penalty to third down. Heads up play. Yeah, excellent recognition by Stafford. Peripherally, he sees the movement. Now he knows he's going to flip it. Doesn't matter where he flips it because he knows he's got five yards. Good job by the senior center, Brad Stafford. So instead of third down and nine, it's third down and four now from the 46. And this is where Hines Ward is really deadly. You better identify, locate, and double team him. And Landis Jerry in the backfield with Bobo. Bobo to the near side. Ward with the catch. And the first down. So you are on the money, Mike. Hines Ward. Big third down catch, and they'll keep the chains moving. Does not take a genius. In a key situation, especially underneath, you're going to look for this guy, Hines Ward. Outside receiver clears the zone. He runs a little out route. He knows he's only got to get four yards. Fall forward. That's the first down. If I'm starting a football team, he's one of the first guys I choose. You know, we're in the backyard, and, and you're picking guys. He's my pick. Raised by his mother, who had to work two jobs to support her young son in Rex, Georgia. Here's Ward now on the sweep. And he'll be knocked out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Leonard Little, and that is the first time we've called his name today. Yeah, a little bit of a controversy down here. He was All-American defensive end that hurt his knee last year. Defensive coordinator John Chavis decided to move him inside the middle linebacker to take advantage of his athletic ability. Now, that's a big change especially when you consider he didn't have a spring practice to, a, to get used to the new position. And he admits that he's still learning the position. And on Thursday when... They're holding on the offense the 10-yard penalty. We pick it down. Well, they only had eight penalties coming into the game today, Georgia. They've got two already today in the first half. And speaking of Leonard Little... We asked him why the coach coaches moved him to middle linebacker, and he said, quite frankly, I still don't know. <laughs> but the guy's a great athlete. He can get sideline to sideline, and that's why they did it. They're looking for an impact player all over the field rather than a defensive end that you can run away from. First down and long from the 47. Here's Gary looking for daylight. Pops it outside mm. at the 40, and he'll go down at the 39. Terry Fair, the right corner. Coming up and making the tackle. One of the things they're doing, though, now with Little is that in the nickel package, and when they're trying to get a little extra pressure, they're taking Little away from the middle, putting back the defensive end, and kicking out Wilson back inside. So having a player with his athletic ability, and look at him, Lombardi Award candidate, Outland Butkus, 22 and a half career sacks behind the Minister of Defense, Reggie White. 
He's a special kind of player, and they're trying to get the most out of his athletic ability. And he already has his degree. Second down at 13. Bobo, short drop, fade, pattern of shot! Oh, and it's man. incomplete. Hines Ward had the step on Dwayne Goodrich. He just couldn't hold on to the football. And Mike Bobo told us yesterday that he thought they were 7-for-7 seven seven on fades this year. He sees the press coverage. He's got Hines Ward one-on-one. -on -one. This ball's put right there. That's a, you know, Woodridge, Goodrich did a nice job, but Bobo knows he put the ball right where it had to be. And for once, Hines Ward didn't come up with a big catch. Bobo so far 7-10, of 10, 116 yards. And Four ten to go here in the second quarter. They'll send the posse to the <laughs> near side of the field. Bobo out of the gun. That's called a bunch, and that's difficult to defend. Here's Bobo. Got it away incomplete. Larry Brown, the intended receiver. And Al Wilson, the outside linebacker, right on his back. Good job by the Tennessee defense coming up with a stand here in the position where they needed to. Dax Langley, the senior from Conyers, Georgia, coming on the punt for the first time this afternoon at his own 45. Low spiraling kick, angled to the far oh! side. Out of bounds at the one. How about that? <laughs> I mean, that's a lost art, the coffin corner kick. A 39-yard punt. For Dax Langley averages 37 on the season. He's had 14 punts. Only five have been returned for a total of two yards. Look at the English on this one. That looks like your sandwich. The bite, the <laughs> kick, and just inside the flag. Oh, man. Watch this ball take a right turn out of bounds. That's just an excellent play. Dax Langley has been a key player for, the, for them this year just because of the quality of his punting. So Tennessee will huddle up in their own end zone. And that brings out a smile from the senior punter. Volunteers with it first down and 10 from their own one. Wow. Power eye. They just want to get it out of there. And Manning will go straight ahead to get him some operating room. Now, today's NASDAQ Scholar Athlete of the Game is Peerless Price of Tennessee. NASDAQ's commitment to the investment in our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to the Tennessee University General Scholarship Foundation, a three-point grade point average in marketing. And you know what I like, Gus? We had a chance to talk to players from both teams this week, and I was so impressed with the quality and the intelligence of these athletes from both squads. You could have picked eight or ten guys for that award. Manning graduates in three years with a 3-6 There's a bunch of those kind of guys out there. Manning passing out of his own end zone. Fires in and out of the hands of Jermaine Copeland. Hit him in the worst place possible right there on the number six. And that becomes a big play if Tennessee has to punt from their own end zone after the next play. He's working on Ronald Bailey, the fifth-year senior. Ball's going to hit him right there on the six. And you've got to make that catch. Forget about running with it. Secure the football. Make the catch. So that'll make it third down and eight. Tennessee so far, four of four on third down conversion. Big play here. And they stay on the ground. Lewis, first down and some at the 20. Trying to get outside. And it'll be dragged down at the 41. Jamal Lewis, I think. <laughs> in this game, 36 yards. The two players that we highlighted at the beginning of the game have taken the game over. And that's the tailback. Good blocking up front. But here comes the cutback. He's going to run away from people. The broken tackle there on Kirby Smart. And at this point, Sight and Talbert, all they can do is jump on and go for a ride. Right at you, good block by Bryce in the fullback, and then it's just great athletic ability. So Tennessee with plenty of room now at their own 40, making the 41, and a fresh set of down. Manning, and this is Bryson out of the backfield, and he'll get a couple. 
Greg Wright there to haul him down. Against the nickel package, he took what was there, and that was just a little swing route to Bryson. Two minutes and 22 seconds and counting here in the second quarter of play, 17 to 10. Ninth ranked Tennessee leading 13th ranked Georgia. from the back side and he'll get out of bounds close to midfield Marcus Stroud there to chase him down that's a good job took what took what was there was good coverage in the secondary and the added bonus he got out of bounds to stop the clock don't forget Nasdaq College football next week right here on CBS Miami and Boston College from the Big East Conference and the other game, the big one, Florida and Auburn, NASDAQ College football beginning next week right here on CBS Sports. And that place will be rocking at Auburn next week. Sixth play of the drive that started at the one-yard line for Tennessee. 2.03 to go, third down and three. Manning underneath, there it is, complete. Marcus Nass once again, he's got the first down at the Georgia 45. Trey Sight, the strong safety with the tackle. Manning recognizes that the clock has stopped while they move the first down markers. One, two, three, four, five. This is why I love it. Stop, set, throw, Nash wide open. Tries to get out of bounds but can't. And now Peyton's got him over center, ready to go again. Four catches, 37 yards for Nash. Manning again. Underneath, and Copeland hauls it in this time. Breaks the tackle, and tip goes out of bounds at the 30. At the gain of 15, so they have gotten down the field in a hurry with a minute and 36 seconds to go here in the second quarter. The zone blitz here. Dustin Lucky, number 50, comes loose, but once again, the slot underneath. Great job by the quarterback out to Copeland, and he does an excellent job running with the football and then stopping the clock. Jermaine Copeland, Jr., from... Harriman, Tennessee, came into this game with 18 receptions. And he may be switched back to quarterback next season. He's got three receptions on the afternoon. First down from the 30. And second away from the pressure, rolling. And Pierre Lestrade calls it in about a yard and a half shot of another first down. So Manning showing a little bit of everything. His mobility, his ability to drop back and hit the big play. And I think right now it's probably good for us to dispel some of the nonsense that some have been saying about Peyton Manning and is he legit or not. <laughs> well, as he demonstrates on this play, Peyton Manning is a guy that understands the total concept on offense. He's got the, the arm strength. And Gus, I think he's almost a victim of his own success in that his level of play has been so high for so long, we, we in the media come to expect supernatural things from him. And I've got to tell you, I've seen a lot of quarterbacks over the last several years. I've watched a lot of tape. This guy understands the game as well as any college quarterback I've ever seen, and he's got the physical tools to back it up. Coming into this game, four straight 300-yard games, and it looks like he's on his way to doing it again. Back in a moment. Then, tune in to our game next weekend and find out who is the fan's choice in the all-time great poll. I have a problem there with Ronnie Lott and Kenny Easley. That's a tough choice. <laughs> I used to love watching Kenny Easley at UCLA, coached, by the way, by our Terry Donahue. Second down and one. Here's a draw play. Lewis, straight ahead inside the ten. Kirby Smart making the saving tackle, but it's a gain of 12 for the true freshman. You know, he's the difference in this offensive attack this week. This is a good Georgia defense they're playing. They're backed up on the one-yard line on third down. What do they do? They go to him. Second down in the red zone, what do they do? Right back to Lewis. Usually it's only Manning. Hurry up offense now by Tennessee. Manning looking. Fearless try. Touchdown.
second touchdown of the season for Peerless Price. About a 99-yard drive. He plays, obviously, the runs by the tailback, but look at the run right here. They're in a little zone package. Price reads it, then he makes the cut inside Bailey and smells the goal line. Jeff Ault, and the extra point is good. Peyton Manning, 19 of 25, three touchdowns, and a one half of play. Eight yard touchdown for Fearless Price, 24 to 10. Tennessee extending their lead over Georgia. Look at Peyton over there, he's having some fun. Jeff Ball sending it away. This will be Champ Bailey from the three. And Bailey steps out of bounds at the 20 yard line. Now the design of the touchdown play is to put this guy in a quandary because you take Marcus Nash and you run him to the corner. He's got to respect that. And then you run a little hitch in here. Now what happens is Ronald Bailey sees Nash go to the corner. He's got to bump back underneath it. So now he reacts up late, and if you don't make the tackle, it's a touchdown. That's just a well-designed and executed offensive play. That drive started on the one-yard line for Tennessee. Georgia now in their own 20, a minute and one second remaining here in the first half. Draw play, Edwards, and nothing doing. Al Wilson. He runs a 4 5 40 yard dash, and while all of the attention has basically been thrust upon his roommate, Leonard Little, he is truly one of the sharp linebackers in the country. And the media might not know him, but other coaches certainly do. That's all they talked about this week at Georgia. He's a junior. Robo again, out of the backfield. Edwards trying to get to the sideline. And he is shot down. Wilson once again in on the tackle as well as Corey Noel. But look what's happening, Gus. The crowd's back into this game. The Tennessee defense is all pumped up right now. Edwards, little, just a little swing out there. Now it's 101. Corey Noel and Edwards. That's an offensive face mask right there that was not called. Edwards on the stiff arm clearly had the face mask of Corey Noel. Third down in the long 12. 32 seconds to go. Here's a counter. Edwards over the 20, and he'll get up to the 24. Game tackled by that Tennessee defense and leading the way, Sean Ellis. Tennessee's got to call timeout here, and they did. So the Volunteers burn their final timeout. 20 seconds remaining. We'll be back to Knoxville after this. George is sending it away, and Langley, high wobbly kick, fielded at the 41-yard line. So Gus Johnson, Mike Mayock with you. And Mike, at first, Georgia had plenty of momentum, but it looks like uh, Big Mo is favoring the Volunteers right now. And this is where you got to be careful. We have a 10-10 ball game, and all of a sudden, a 14-point spurt, but it wasn't necessarily Peyton Manning. It was, I believe, it was the impetus supplied by that freshman tailback, Jamal Lewis. And what a gem they have found in Jamal Lewis last week, 155 yards rushing on 22 carries. Today in the first half, 147 yards rushing on 11 carries. And he really makes a difference in this offense. Here's Manning, the slant pattern, hits Copeland, and he'll be corralled inside the 45 with five seconds to go. Uh, coming up with the college football today halftime report, Jim Nance, Craig James, and Lou Holt will get you caught up on all the scores and highlights from around college football. Here's Manning. Gonna kill it. Yep, here we go. And there he is. That allows them the time now to try and kick a long field goal. Bill Fulmer has played this by the book and done a great job of giving him a chance to score. Look at this. Here comes Peyton. They're going to go for it. A potential backbreaker for Georgia. As you see him in the prevent defense, they've got three 
secondary people across the middle. I don't think Tennessee's got 11 on the field. Here's Manning. Checks up under pressure. And he goes down. Number 96, Paul Snelling with the tackle. And that is the end of the first half of play from Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee. The Volunteers leading the Bulldogs 24 to 10. Peyton Manning's had a great first half. Jamal Lewis, the difference offensively to make him even more effective. But the one thing they haven't been able to do this year is just put the door, close the door on an opponent. They were up and heavy against UCLA to let him come back. They've got to be careful in the second half against Jim Donnan. Jim Donnan, Georgia Bulldogs trying to win in Knoxville for the first time since 1980. The last time they did it, Herschel Walker was a true freshman and scored two touchdowns. Now let's go downstairs to our Dave Logan. And that's the end of the first half of play with the score, Tennessee leading Georgia 24 to 10. Jim Nance, Greg James, and Lou Holt will be along with College Football Today right after this word from your local station. And welcome back to Knoxville where we are all set to begin the second half of play. <laughs> if you can kind of take a look through the, uh, through the crack there, you'll see Jamal Lewis. 11 carries, 149 yards for the true freshman, his second career start. Is he stretching or sleeping? <laughs> and in the end zone, Hines Ward will take a knee. Statistically, in the first half of play, the most glaring has to be the rushing numbers for both teams. Yeah, I said if Georgia could run for 100 yards, they win the game, but take a look next to it. 174 yards for Tennessee, 389 total offense. That's a whole day's work. They're huge numbers for Tennessee, but Peyton Manning will be an even more effective quarterback with the run attack that's provided by Jamal Lewis. And Mike Bobo trotting back onto the football field. 8 of 12 in the first half, 114 yards. Robert Edwards, he had 113 yards rushing himself for Georgia as they start on their own 20. Allen in motion, and we'll get a penalty. Right guard jumping off sides. That is rather the right tackle, Chris Every Carey. Ball, got illegal motion on the offensive line. Let, let's take a look at what Peyton Manning's done in the first half. Horizontally first, he's thrown three, seven, nine passes horizontally, but now vertically. He's got three over here, two which are in 10-yard zone, and then 10 to 25. 10 and 10. If you take a look at that, it tells you he doesn't throw the ball down the field vertically as much as you think. Most of it's completed underneath, and then those great receivers run with the football. First down at 15 for Georgia. They set up the screen to Edwards. Got outside at the 15. Stutter step. Cut it back in, and is finally gang tackled at the 23-yard line. That'll be a gain of eight on the play. Leonard Little making the tackle for the Volunteers. It, let's not forget that Edwards had eight carries for 113 yards himself in the first half. So I, I, th I don't think they can panic right now. You're down 14, plenty of game left. Go back to your basic game plan and put points on the board. Run the football. Prior to last week's game, in which he rushed for 102 yards, Edwards had only two carries on the season because of that injured right ankle. Here's Bobo. Over the middle, Hines Ward with the catch. And it'll be close to a first down, about a half yard shy. Al Wilson wrapping him up. Hines Ward, one of the most dangerous triple threats in college football from Rex, Georgia. And take a look at some of his career numbers. Wow. You know, back in 1995, he started at three different positions. Quarterback, running back, and wide receiver, and I don't know if anybody in the history of the NCAA has done that. On third down and one, Edwards over the left side, and he'll pick up the first down. Robert Edwards and Patrick Pass, who is his backfield mate, backs him up. Number six, they're very good friends, and Edwards, the older player, but Pass, the younger player, has been playing tailback for about nine years, and he's Edwards' biggest coach. 
And the reason it is is because Edwards was a defensive back when he came here. Only moved over when a couple of people got hurt two years ago. So pass has really helped him, especially with pass protection. First down from the 31. Bobo tripping. Got it away. Incomplete. Skipped it in to Corey Allen. The motion man. And Mike Bobo having a problem getting his feet under him in the backfield. Yeah, because of the slip, they, they were basically just a half pace off that whole time in the ball that was delivered late. Let's see if he catches himself up with any of the looks like the center or guard stepped on his foot. He does a good job just staying up. Edwards helps him, but now the ball is delivered late, and Terry Fair does a good job breaking on it. So sometimes got the plays doomed before it even starts. Mike Bobo lost 18 pounds to begin this season. As you take a look at the scores from around the country. Here's a handoff, Edwards, and he's tackled for a loss. Number 22, Corey Terry, right in. And there was a blown assignment on the offensive line for Georgia. And Corey Terry is 6'3", 260, and Gus, he was a high school tailback. He's put on 50 pounds, he still runs a 4'5", 540. And he's the kind of guy that can be a better player than he is at this point. If he's got great ability, he's got to keep working hard every day to be an impact player. Bobo out of the shotgun. Flags on the play. Steps up, delivers. Hines Ward with the step in. He is tackled at the 45. Corey Gaines with the hit, but there is a flag on the play. And this 18-yard gain may come back. I think the question here is, did the whistle blow a dead or not? Because that was a free play. That was a free play for Mike Bobo, because it was offsides on Tennessee. We have offsides on the defense. Penalties to climb. See, I, I okay. didn't know whether I heard a whistle or not. If they blew the play dead, that would have negated the big play and just given them a five-yarder. But a good job by Hines and Bobo. That on a third down and long. So the chains continue to move for the Bulldogs. First down now from the 45. A forward in the backfield. Here's the pass. Corey Allen. And Tennessee sitting right on that play, well aware of Ward's passing prowess. That's why every play you've got to locate number 19 pre-snap. If he's lined up at running back, it's for a reason. That's a double pass. It's a lateral, and now he's looking for Corey Allen. Excellent job by Corey Gaines. And let's face it, the coaching of John Chavis, the defensive coordinator, he told me we've got to locate every play where that young man lines up, and then we got to play it from there. That'll make it second down. And then from the 45, eighth play of the drive for the Bulldogs. Pass in motion out of the backfield. Bobo over the middle. Eyeswood again with the catch and again with a first down. That time a gain of 12. Bo Bobo and Ward do an excellent job of recognition that time of a zone defense. Here comes the motion this way. This is Hines Ward. He's going to rotate in here as the linebacker expands and be right in there in between the two linebackers. There's the motion. They recognize zone coverage, and Hines Ward will go right in between one linebacker and break towards the other. Move the chain. First down. We've got six catches, 82 yards. First down from the Tennessee 43. Robert Edwards. Bergling over the 35-yard line inside to the 33. Leonard Little there to catch him on his way down. This is Georgia football right here. Stay running the football. You've got Edwards. Watch the blocking right here. Great block at the point of attack, and he's going to take it right up there. This is Georgia football. That's what they want. Herndon gets the lead block. He cuts inside of it. Nine-yard pickup. Don't panic, just keep moving the football. First drive of the second half for Georgia. And now they have it on the Tennessee 33-yard line. Here's Edwards again. And it'll pick up for couple. Now follow your favorite team all season long on CBS Sportsline. We've got scores, highlights, breaking news, and all kinds of in-depth information. CBS Sports Line is your online source for stats on all 112 Division 1A teams. 
plus our team of journalists are working hard to cover all of your favorite sports. Check it out at cbs.sportsline.com. Another quality drive for Georgia. Robert Edwards carrying the ball 125 yards. Play action. Bobo in the end zone. Oh, under. Terry Fair, who missed last week because of an injured shoulder, stepping in and breaking up the pass. But that ball may have been underthrown. Underthrown and a little bit late. Bobo does not have great arm strength. He needs to let that go and put it in the back of the end zone. But let's give Terry Fair credit. He's the best man coverage guy. He's going to turn, locate the football. It's underthrown. That's a good job by the receiver, Corey Allen, turning around and playing defensive back. Watch AD strip it. That's a wide receiver making a defensive back play on Terry Fair. Terry Fair from Phoenix, Arizona. He's a senior. Brother Brian, part of some good UConn basketball team. He's playing overseas right now. Bobo under pressure over the middle, and that is Tony Small, the junior from Jacksonville, Florida, making the grab. Now, this is a situation where Georgia's gained a lot of yards between the 30-yard lines, but they've had a little bit of a trouble in the red zone area. It's a big third down situation for them. Down 14, you've got to convert here. And on the season, Georgia came into this game 15 of 19 in the red zone, 13 touchdowns, two field goals. Here's Hines Ward right there in the trips formation. You better cover him. Here's the option. Robert Edwards. Cuts it in. Edwards. First down. Edson. What a good play call by Jim Donnan. Edwards picks up 13 yards, gets down close to the 10. And the Georgia wide receivers pride themselves on blocking people downfield. And the key block here for Jim Donnan's group is the wide receivers out front. There's the dish away from 93, Sean Ellis. The wide receivers are blocking out front, allows the cutback by Edwards. Big, big play on third down. And Jim Donnan showing the Oklahoma option influence that uh, he perfected while in Norman. Coaching under Barry Switzer. 14th play of the drive. This time it is the fullback, Selma Callaway. And Callaway will get it inside the 10-yard line, and he is down at about the 8. Selma Callaway, a senior from Colquitt, Georgia. Only nine carries on the season. Uh-oh, Al Wilson, their outstanding outside linebacker. Problem, the way they're working on him, it looks like a cramp. Hot day today. But Georgia right now, banging on the Tennessee door. Second down and six from the eight. Tennessee showing blitz. They're keeping him up to the line of scrimmage. Here they come. Handoff, pass the pass, nowhere to go. Nowhere to go for Patrick Bass and company. Darwin Walker in on the play. And slow to get up, Raynock Thompson. Al Wilson, Leonard Little, they get a lot of credit, but Thompson, a great-looking athlete, looks like a basketball player. Call and lead. We saw him yesterday in the cafeteria. <laughs> Third down, key play. you got to watch tight ends, and you got to watch Lane Ward. Robert Edwards, the lone setback. Uh, pinch home, flinch. They're going to get the left tackle for jumping offside. Here's the team coming into this game, committed only eight penalties for a little over 70 yards. Different story today for Jim Donnan's bunch. In key situations also. The dead ball, the illegal motion on the offensive line, the five-yard penalty. Now, there's some movement on the defensive side, but Stinchcomb is going to react to it, and he can't because they didn't jump in the neutral zone. See the, the jump there? He reacts to that. Stinchcomb, number 79, jumps offside. Fourth penalty of the day for Georgia. 25 yards, Stinchcomb. Best player on that offensive line. And here come the fans at Neyland Stadium, all 106,000 rooting on the defense. More difficult to find a tight end now, so they've got four wide. Bobo. Out of the Bill Duck. 
<laughs> the senior from Delran, New Jersey, right outside Philadelphia, coming up, making the tackle, and he is one of the most delightful young men we've seen all season. Builds up right here, gets a good power rush right up the middle. This is where Bobo's got to get rid of the football. That's a bad sack to take by a senior quarterback because now you've got a very, very difficult 45-yard field goal rather than a chip shot. Half high, and they're trying to get players off the field. They fake it. Patrick pass wide open at the 10. <laughs> And he will be down inside the kid. It's not enough, though, for the first down. The holder, Drew Chronic, throwing the pass. Wow. They tried to make it look like there was an extra man on the field, and pass was running off the field. Chronic picks the ball up. He was a high school quarterback, throws it immediately. Catch by pass, poor tackle by Noel. But he doesn't get a first down. Gus, that's as good as a, as a punt, but not as good as three points. So it tells you what they're con in the field goal game. They didn't feel confident going for three. Well, perhaps Hines is long on the season. 32 yards, so 45 yarder. Pretty much out of the question for the Bulldogs. 6.48 to go. Back in a moment. 6.48 to go in the third quarter of play. Tennessee up 24 to 10. Gus Johnson, Mike Mayock missed opportunities uh, pretty much the way to, to describe it right now for Georgia. Three times they've been inside the 30-yard line and have come up empty. So they've run the ball, thrown the ball at will between the 30s, but they've had two bad sacks taken by Bobo and a missed field goal. And Gus, you've got to convert those opportunities against the number nine team in the country. So the Georgia defense really needing a big stop right here. They've got the Volunteers 10 inside their own 20. And Georgia's last drive, 16 plays, covering 72 yards. They ate up 8 minutes and 12 seconds and came out of the deal with no points. Here's Manning giving it to the freshman Huey Cole. And there it goes. At the 40, wrapped up at the 45. Gain of 34, let's go to Jim Nance. All right, Gus, finally, Pittsburgh finds shelter in the end zone. Watch this six-yard run by Dwayne Schultz. Don't count out the Panthers. It's 17-7, Fighting Irish, 5.56 to go, third quarter. Let's go back to Tennessee. All right, Jim, you really have to tip your hat to this offensive line for Tennessee. They've been criticized all year long, and some of them went to the coaching staff and said, hey, Let's run the football more, and we'll show you how good we can be, and they are certainly doing it today. Here's Lewis again over the 45-yard line, up to the 46. He's got 187 yards rushing on 13 carries, and some of the holes are big enough for even a guy like me to run through. <laughs> it's scary to think how good this offense can be if they can consistently run the football. It's going to make Peyton Manning even better. We got illegal participation by the defensive team and four people on the field. I guess they figured if you can't stop with 11, we're going to put a 12th out there and challenge the referee crew, but they were up to the test. Gus was just talking about that offensive line, and Gus, I couldn't agree with you more. And I think there's a mentality. When you're used to pass blocking 48 times a game, I think it's difficult to get in a three-point stance and try and blow people off the ball. But once you get used to doing it, there's a whole different mentality. And their offensive line coach, Mark Bradley, has done a great job getting ready to run the football. First down from the 40-yard line of Georgia. Manning audibly once again. Some little wheel route, I think. Here's a handoff, and Lewis... I'll pick up a couple. Derek Bird making the tackle. Now tomorrow, beginning at 4 p.m. Eastern here on CBS, final round coverage of the Michelob Championship at Kings Mill, live from Williamsburg, Virginia. Duffy Waldorf holds a three-stroke lead going into the final round. And Tennessee trying to add to their lead here with 4.48 to play. On top, 24 to 10, and marching down the field again. Manning into the flat, and the fullback making the reception. That's Sean Bryson. He's wrapped up by O.G. Grant. Penn State trailing Ohio State on, at home, rather. All right. 
North Carolina finally came back. They took Keldorf out of the game. They were down 6-3 at half. And you know the Big Ten, those teams are going to be knocking each other off the entire year. Michigan, Michigan State, Penn State, Ohio State, no. Iowa, all very good football teams. Both the Big Ten and the SEC have five teams in the top 20 and three teams in the top 10. I don't think there's any question who the best two conferences are. Third down and five. Manning broken up. Nice looking play by the sophomore, Champ Bailey. They say he's got a ton of ability. And he came up with a pretty nice break up there. Yeah, real nice play by Bailey, but Copeland's got to come back to the quarterback harder. There's the throw. Now you got to come back hard to the quarterback. If you do that, it eliminates the defensive back coming over your back and making a play. So that, that's a young receiver there, Copeland, who was a quarterback. Fourth down, Gus. And they're going for it. Two receivers to the far side, one to the near. Out of the offset eye, here's Manning. Over the middle. Andy McCullough has had problems holding on to the football this season. He dropped two big passes last week against Ole Miss, and he dropped another big one right there. 3.52 to go in the third quarter. Tennessee turns it over on down. Wedge Pro Gel, lose the foam, save your skin. And by the Hartford, bring it on. And that swarming defense by Tennessee will plug up first down for the Bulldogs as Georgia. They have their best starting field position of the day at their own 35-yard line after the Andy McCullough drop. But now the ball is going to be spotted at about the 31. It goes back to what Chris Selfo, the assistant head coach at Georgia, told me the other day, which is we can't afford to be trying to do 14 to 20 play drives against this defense. They're too good. We need a couple thoughts somewhere where we make a big play. That hasn't happened yet today for Georgia. Nine Ward lining up in the slot at the top of your screen. Bobo out of the shotgun and another flag has fallen. And it looks like the movement on the Georgia offensive line. And it might have been a nose guard that time. I'm not sure. I thought Buck Buxton jumped. Dead ball. Still in the movement on the offensive line. Uh, I, I was wrong. Buxton was drawn off. Six penalties. 45 yards for Georgia. They came into this game with only eight for a little over 70 on the season in four games. And this is where Donnan's group has got to keep their composure. They've had four blowout wins so far. They've been on the road, excuse me, at home all four games. They're in a hostile environment. They've got to pull together right now and put together a drive. A lot of noise on the field. We're in front of 106,000. Bobo in the gun once again. Second down and 19. Low snap, picked up over the middle, and it is caught. Tony Small hauling it in, and he'll be close to the original line of scrimmage. Busy day for Jim Nance. Let's check in with him in New York. All right, Gus, here's the guy that Lou Holtz said could be another Jerome Bettis. Talking about Jamie Spencer, the Notre Dame fullback, up the middle, 23 yards. Mike Mayock, you know if you're in the secondary, you don't want to see 245 pounds of Jamie Spencer headed your way. Let's go back to Knoxville, Gus and Mike. tackle him because I know I'll get him down. It's those little scat backs I have trouble with. Third down and eight. Bobo over the middle. Broken up. And Al Wilson, another great play on defense by the junior from Jackson, Tennessee. There are not many linebackers that can run with a wide receiver the way that Al Wilson just did. Slot back, number 27, covering Hind Ward, watch him run, read the football, and dive with the correct arm. The right arm reaches in. He looks like a defensive back, not an outside linebacker. That's a great job by Al Wilson. At 6 feet, 230, he has been clocked at 4-3 in the 40-yard dash. I'm not buying it, though. <laughs> and the fair catch signal at the 11-yard line, and that is Terry Fair. That's where Tennessee will start. 53-yard punt, 2.04 to go. 24 to 10. 24 to 10, our score, 204 remaining in the third quarter of play. The last 
big time tailback they had at Tennessee, Jay Graham, who now is playing in the NFL, but they have another one in this, in this young Lewis kid. 14 carries, 189 yards, adds a, adds a whole different dimension to this Tennessee offense. There he is, but he will be wrapped up from behind Rick Wright, the middle linebacker with the tackle. And next week, don't forget Ryan Clement and the Miami Hurricanes will be in Boston on NASDAQ College football, taking on BC, and then it's Florida and Auburn. Another big SEC showdown. Second down and nine from the 13 for the Volunteers. Jamal time. There he is. Cut the back. And it's bottled up pretty nicely. That time, Brandon Colbert and Derek Bird were waiting for him. Ohio State holding on in the third quarter. How about South Carolina coming back? They were down 14-0 against Kentucky, so I guess they shut down Tim Couch after a while. West Virginia beating up on Maryland. That's a good one for the Big East. A minute to go here in the third quarter. Third down and seven from the 15. They fake the draw. Manny hitting it over the middle. And that's Copeland. That's a 30 and a first down. Gain of 14. And there is an injured player in the Tennessee backfield. What happens when you run the ball effectively? Watch the linebackers. They step up. Then Arantes Grant says, uh-oh, i got to get back in coverage, but it's too late. Copeland is wide open. If you can run the football effectively, there's the fake draw. Linebacker reacts up, and look at him, wide open in the hole. It's just going to make Peyton Manning an even better and more effective quarterback. And there is an injured player. We cannot see his number right now. Looks like an offensive lineman. Number 68, and it is number 68, Spencer Riley, a sophomore. Newmark gets Tennessee, and they are tending to him right now. Now, coming up Monday, don't miss the number one new drop. Always some interesting things happening in Brooklyn, New York. It looks like one, another one of those tremendously sophisticated top shows. <laughs> show. Very slick. I, I kind of get hooked into those. Yeah. Riley is up to his feet. They're walking him to the sideline. New Market, Tennessee. Look at that belly right there. He's looking pretty good. Huh? Now that's, a, that's an offensive lineman <laughs> right there. You, you get that belly underneath somebody, and there's his replacement. That's the Ron Robinson. He plays both guards and also center. He actually start, was a starter in 1996 before he got hurt. So having him come in the game doesn't really hurt them. A junior from Oklahoma City. 39 seconds to go in the third quarter. First down from the 29. Here's the pitch. And up to the 35-yard line. That is number 25, Travis Stevens, a freshman running back from Clarksville, Tennessee. Yeah, they really like Stevens, but the key to this play, whenever you're going to run this kind of toss sweep, your fullback has got to block contain. Watch 24 fullback. Come out on the contain man, left side of your screen, right there on Bailey. That opens up the inside and allows Stevens to cut it in and pick up the yardage. And gosh, you don't see a whole lot of teams with two true freshmen as their lead tailback. And that is the end of the third quarter of play with the score. Tennessee leading Georgia 24 to 10. We'll return to Neyland Stadium right after this message and a word from your local station. And welcome back on first down. Bryson running the football over the left side as we begin the fourth quarter of play, and not a very big game. Every once in a while, they let the fullback have a bone. They give him the football because all he does the rest of the game is block people. Bryson's a tough young man, catches the ball well out of the backfield. So third down and two from the 37. There's Nash in motion. Here's Lewis, and he is tackled for a loss. A nice run-stopping play. Travis Stroud, the senior from Atlanta, his 13th tackle of the season. 
and Travis was up over 300 pounds in the spring, wasn't as effective. He wasn't as quick as he usually is, so they got him down that 270 to 280 range, and that's a big play. Third and one, they've got to get the football back, and Georgia's got to make a big play here offensively. So that'll bring on Chris Hogue to punt from his own 20-yard line, his first punt of the game, if you can believe it. And he sends it away, and it is a beauty. Fields it at the 15-yard line. Greer, and he finds a little bit of running room up to the 25, make it the 27. 12-yard return for Mike Greer. 51-yard punt, 13.30 to go here in the fourth quarter of play. 24 to 10, 13.30 to go here in the third quarter, and at the fourth quarter, rather, and after all that scoring in the third quarter, uh, in the first half, rather, uh, in the third quarter, teams unable to get the ball in the end zone. Yeah, no points in the third quarter, but this is what Georgia wants. They want to put the ball game in the hands of Mike Bobo. Down the sidelines, and look who that is in the game. It's Bailey, and they say it's a test. You know what, Gus? That is his second reception of the year. He's got two runs from the flanker position, and that's Jim Don and being creative again. He's not afraid to put anywhere on the football field to get put them in a position to win. Tough snap. Bobo does a good job, and folks, this play is designed from the get-go to get their fastest player one-on-one -on -one out there on Steven Johnson, and look at the catch. Extends up over Johnson, keeps the foot in bounds, possession of the football. That's a great athlete making a big play. So Georgia inside the 30-yard line once again. Let's see if they can come up with points. Here's Edwards cutting it back, spinning, trying to get outside, and is written down at the 25-yard line. Let's go to New York and our gymnast. All right, Gus, up and down the field they go, and Pittsburgh answers the Jamie Spencer touchdown. It's Kevin Barlow from nine yards out, and they start the fourth quarter at Pitt Stadium, Notre Dame in front, 24-14. Let's go back to Gus and Mike. 24-10 here in Knoxville, but Georgia with the ball at the Tennessee 25. Second down and nine. Bobo setting up. It's blocked at the line of scrimmage. Looks like Sean Ellis, the sophomore defensive lineman from Anderson, South Carolina, may have gotten a hand on it. Yeah, John Chavis told me yesterday he's a guy they've got to get more snaps to. He's played so well at the backup end position. Watch number 93 come into the screen. Arm extended right there. There it is, folks. That's a great look at it. If you can't get to the quarterback, elevate and extend those arms. So a big third down for Georgia. At the 25, they need nine. Here's a counter. They run the reverse. And some room. Hines one. Out of bounds at the 10. But he picked up a first down. Gain of 15. <laughs> the quarterback, Bobo, picks up a block. Lineman down the field, pick up a block. Jim Dunn and this offense will do whatever it takes to get creative offensively. Third and long situation, the handoff. Now here it comes. Watch 14 block, Terry. There's the quarterback, a little low lay. <laughs> a little low lay, but the late block on Raynock Thompson got Ward to the corner. So a first down for the Bulldogs. <laughs> I feel like Bob knows what He just faked it. Oh, lay. I really don't think I'm going to hit you. Out of the shotgun. He's got Edwards right next to him. Cross the pitch it into the short side, and Tennessee sitting there waiting for the play. And that is Jonathan Brown, another big tackle for the senior from Tulsa. That's two great athletes making a play. Jonathan Brown, Leonard Little from the inside out. Here comes Little number one. Brown catches him from the inside. There's nowhere to go. That's a play that Georgia favors. Two tight ends into the sideline and run fall sweep. I think Tennessee's too quick to go outside on. I think if you're going to run the ball, it's got to be between the tackles. Second down and goal from the 11. Bobo stepping up, incomplete, and he had a wide open receiver in the back of the end zone, Tony Small, he just didn't see him. You know what, Gus, you make a great point because he wanted Hines Ward the whole way. He 
He follow. Here's Hines Ward right here. He's going to work his way inside, and the quarterback, Bobo, focuses in the whole way. He's not looking anywhere but Hines Ward. He finally comes open, but look back there, folks. If he extends his field of vision, he's got Tony Small wide open in the back of the end zone. Third down, goal to go. Bobo under pressure, and they try to set up the screen to Gary, but the play read perfectly, really sticked out by Jonathan Brown and Leonard Little. Georgia ran 33 screens in their first four games, and I expected to see a lot more of that today. That's their first screen. Tennessee read it beautifully. Once again, inside the 30, the Tennessee defense has been the difference in this football game. That'll bring on the field goal unit. 28-yard attempt for half Hines. He's one of two. And it's up and good. So Georgia, this time, they do not come up empty. 24 to 13, our score. And welcome back to Knoxville, Tennessee, where we have had a terrific football game from the very beginning. Georgia going on an eight-play, 62-yard drive as Hap Hines nails a 28-yard field goal. And they trail at 24-13. This will kick into the middle of the end zone where Mark Levine will take a knee and Tennessee will start from their own 20. As far as I'm concerned, 11-27 left in the game. I'd love to, if I'm Tennessee, I'm just gonna get in the I formation and get Jamal Lewis the ball. A little play action with the Heisman Trophy candidate right there, Peyton Manning. And I think that's a tough combination for this Georgia defense. Run the clock, give Peyton a chance to make first down, keep the ball away from Georgia. Georgia defense has been better. Against Tennessee here in the second half of play, volunteers have not put the ball through the upright door, across the goal line, no points so far. Here's Lewis. Got outside and knocked out of bounds at the 26. Pretty smart. OG Grant combining on the tackle. So the top 10, Florida at LSU tonight in Death Valley. Penn State on the ropes this afternoon at home against Ohio State, Nebraska, Florida State, Carolina, Michigan. Beating Northwestern today, Ohio State, Auburn, Tennessee at number nine in Washington. That Ohio State, Penn State game really will dictate a lot of what happens at the bowl line this year down the road. Second down at three from the 27. Manning, quick fire, wide open at Bryson for a first down as he is knocked out of bounds, shy of the 40. That's a gain of 10, Champ Bailey there to push him out of bounds. What I mean by play action becomes effective when you're able to run the football. Peyton told us that last week, the more they ran the ball, the more effective his play action takes became. Usually teams don't even pay attention to the Tennessee running attack. That's a classic example. Play action, sneak the fullback in the flat, it's like stealing. First down now for the Vols at their own 39. Manning into the flat. Here's Lewis, stutter step. Kept going, and he'll pick up a couple of yards. Paul Snellings with the tackle. Tennessee in the second half. This is how it looks. Two drives. One covering six plays, the other seven plays. No points out of either drive. And what that tells you is that both teams are doing fairly well with extended drives, but they're not scoring. Second down and long. Marcus Nash to the near side. Manning over the middle, and this time, Andy McCullough holds on to the football. And he's got a first down at the 45. We may get a penalty here, though. I think it's going to be a hold. I think we're going to get a hold on Tennessee, and that's going to bring it back. That's Trey Teague. 
Craig's not real happy right now. He's a senior cent, uh, center and also former roommate with Peyton Manning. Here's Astra Sizemore, the referee with the call. As they sort things out, here we go. We have a dead ball. That's the play is over. First the foul on the home team. The 15 yards. Perfect. Another personal foul penalty. That's the second today. They had four last week. And what's going on with something like that, Mike? Well, so, sometimes it's a lack of discipline. Take a look here at Mercedes Hamilton, the right guard. He's holding on to Snellings the whole way there, pushing him past. And then right at the end, right there, you see what happens. Teague just pushes his guy into the ground. I'm not sure that's real flagrant. I see offensive linemen do that all the time. But, uh... Referee's going to call it, and that costs him A, a first down, and B, an additional 15 yards. Top 25 scores. Ohio State still holding on. Now 27-24, but a lot of time remaining in the fourth quarter. Let me clarify that. Because it was a post-possession foul, it was still a first down, but they lose the yardage. From the 40. Manning. Near side, Nash with the catch, turns, and it's tackled at midfield. Jack Bailey with the hit, but he gains 12. And Marcus Nash, another reception. He comes into this game averaging seven per contest. So smooth in the tradition of Tennessee receivers. He finally gets defensive back to turn his hip, and the ball, like always, with Manning is on time. That's just pitch and catch, just like he, they did it all summer when they worked out together four times a week. Marcus also got married on August 2nd to Lori Holloway, Peyton Manning, and some other Tennessee players served as groomsmen. <laughs> That's a big old wedding party. <laughs> Here we go, Lewis. Running off tackle on the right side, gets down to the 45-yard line. <laughs> O.G. Grant making the hit along with Travis Stroud. That's a classic example of what a big back can do. That play looked like it had no shot, no gain, but the big fella just kept pushing the pile, pushing the pile, driving the legs, and all of a sudden you get four or five yards. You get a little scat back, and it's no gain. And this is a really calm and collected young man, Jamal Lewis. When we talked to him, he said, the biggest difference in playing here is the speed, but I have no fear going out there and competing with these guys. I know that I'm good, and I think that this is the place for me to be. There he is on the pitch. Out around the corner, and a first down. Another first down for Lewis. Let's go to New York in our gym name. All right, Gus, Notre Dame plowing up some big yardage on the ground, 249 rushing yards. Autry Benson into the end zone for the second time today. Breathing room for the Irish, 17-point lead with 11.57 remaining. Let's go back to Knoxville. Just a huge day for the true freshman from Atlanta, Georgia. Jamal Lewis, 20 carries, 211 yards. This only his second career start. First down from the 35 for UT. Play action. To the far side, complete. Marcus Nash tips going, and finally out of bounds at the 22 yard line. And we will get a penalty flag. A late hit coming up against Georgia. Late hit on Nash, and Tennessee firing offensively on all cylinders right now. It's pitch and catch between Peyton Manning and his good friend, Marcus Nash. Look at that look. He knows. Late hit. Of a dead ball, personal foul, late hit out of bounds. Does it have the distance? First down. Top of the screen, working again against Champ Bailey. Nash comes out of the cut. Britt does a nice job breaking the tackle, keeping his feet. He's really been out of bounds, but there's the late. You know, I don't like that call, mostly because Nash is still running, and the defensive back doesn't know that he's out of bounds. I think you got to let kids play, especially if one of them, like the wide receiver, is still going full speed. If I'm the defensive back, I take that shot. Earl Chambers taking the shot. Seventh penalty of the game for Georgia. They have almost doubled 
the season output in one game. First down from the 12 for the ball. Here's Lewis. And he will be shy of the goal line. What an impressive looking running back. I'm really impressed by his quickness for a big guy. If number 58, Grant, doesn't make the play over here, nobody's going to make it. And Grant misses the tackle. He runs right through it. Look at the extension trying to get the end zone. That is a young man that just turned 18 years old. If he keeps his head on his shoulders, he's got an incredible future here at the University of Tennessee. 221 yards rushing on 21 carries. They line up in the power eye. And guess who the deep back is? It's Lewis. Favorite play is Iso. This time they hand it to Levine, and Levine will be stacked up at the goal line and driven backwards. Greg Bright, the middle linebacker, sniffing out the play. You know, it looked like touchdown to me when the hole opened up, but Greg Bright did a wonderful job pushing Levine, who's only 190 pounds, out of the hole. Watch 45 flash from the right side, makes the hit in the hole. And if we take a look the other way from the reverse angle, watch 45 right here. He's going to come left to right, make the play on the half-yard line, and at 190 pounds, they throw Levine backwards. Power eye again. Lewis the deep back. The ball at about the half-yard line. Manning. Volunteers behind Peyton Manning. They go up 30 to 13. They're having some fun now. This is a big game for them. You know, Gus, when we talked to them earlier, they talked about how tough Florida week was and how they couldn't wait for this game because it was just going to be fun. And I think these guys play better when they're just having fun. And the extra point is good. Peyton Manning. The throw for 283 yards, three touchdown passes, and now he picks up a rushing touchdown. The captain is on the phone. 31 to 13, his volunteers lead George Gus Johnson, Mike Mayock. He had thrown for all the yardage today, but they are a much more effective team today. And uh, Peyton Manning will be the first one to tell you that if he only throws for 283 yards, yet they play as well as they have today, he'll take that any day over the individual staff. Here's the kick. And this is Bailey inside the five. And he'll get over the 20 and be written down at the 24. Now don't forget, coming up next week on NASDAQ College Football here on CBS Sports, Doubleheader, Miami, Boston College, Ryan Clement, Matt Hasselback, the two quarterbacks from Miami and D.C. And the big game in the Southeastern Conference. Auburn and Florida. Damian Craig will see what he can do against Doug Johnson and those Gators. And they have their hands full tonight at Death Valley against LSU. So Mike Bobo and company starting from their own 24. Swings it out, Patrick Pass, and he is stopped. Raynock Thompson, the outside linebacker, coming up and making the hit. Good open field tackle. Tennessee's got it going on both sides of the football right now. The defense is flying as well as I've seen them all year to the ball. The offense playing pitch and catch with a tremendous tailback taking the heat off the pass game. Gus, this is a fine, fine football team when they play like this. Second down and 11 from the 23 now. Bobo out of the gun. Leonard Little showing blitz. Here he comes. Bobo and down the road. Leonard Little coming around the edge, and he just destroyed the pocket single-handedly. He, he deposited Patrick Pass about five yards backwards. They move him to defensive end up here when they want to sit, make something happen. Stop, watch him run over Patrick Pass. He pushes him five yards into the pocket, collapses it, forces Bobo back inside. 
That's why Leonard Little is such a special football player. He can get up the field and in the quarterback's face as well as any athlete in the country. Makes it third down and 12 from the 22 for the dog. To the near side, complete small, but he'll be well shy of first down as Corey Noel, the senior out of Memphis, came up from his strong safety position and put on the tackle. And they're rocking here in Knoxville. Third and long, they did a perfect thing here. They just played a soft zone, forced Bobo to throw it underneath, and then you come up and make the short tackle and force the punt. Now, Gus, earlier this year in game number one, Georgia faked the punt on their own 18-yard line. I don't think they'll do it here because Tennessee's in a punt safe, but Donovan will do anything. Almost blocked this, an end-over-end kick. Terry Fair steers clear of it, and it takes the Georgia bounce. It'll be down to the 25. 47-yard punt by Dax Langley, and it was almost blocked. And if that had been blocked, it would have been a crime because they weren't even a punt block. 5.06 to go. It's all Tennessee. 31 to 13, 5.06 to go in the fourth quarter of play. Some concerned looks on the Georgia sideline. Peyton Manning and company with the ball at their own 25. Here's Lewis again, and Lewis just lowering his head over the 35-yard line. He'll pick up 12. And the scoring summary. Marcus Nash, a 13-yard touchdown in the first quarter of play to open up the scoring. Half Hines then came back and kicked a 29-yard field goal to make it 7-3. to three. Jeff Hall made it 10-3 with a field goal. Then Robert Edwards, 49-yard rumble for a touchdown. And Peyton Manning, another touchdown pass this time. The freshman Cedric Wilson, a fearless twice, an eight-yard touchdown. Another field goal by Half Hines, and then the one-yard touchdown by Manning. Here's the pitch to the freshman tailback. And that's Travis Stevenson. Rather, Travis Stevens. His second carry of the game. And Jamal Lewis on the sidelines. And look at the day that he has had. 22 carries, 233 yards. <laughs> Over 10 yards of carry. And we talked to him the other day, Gus, and we asked him what, the, what it came down to as far as his decisions for college. And he said it was Tennessee or it was Nebraska. He said, but you know, it was just a little too cold in Nebraska. In Lincoln. And I didn't want to get too far from home anyway. So. And if you're Jim Donnan, in the near future, you want to make sure that a kid like Jamal Lewis, his final decision comes down to Georgia and whomever else, especially since the young man is from Atlanta. So you always want to keep the great in-state kids home. That's, that's a prerequisite for any college program in the country, but especially down here in the southeast. And here's the what if versus the SEC East. Look at the records against everybody else they've dominated except Florida. Hey, Philip Fulmer is 46 and 10 in his sixth season. Five of his losses are to Florida, and there are people down here that say that's not good enough. And they hand it off once again. This time Levine breaking through at the 45. And it'll be down at the 40. That offensive line having a terrific day for Tennessee. But a flag is on the play. Now, to get on that list, you have to have a minimum of five years. So, Philip Palmer's into his sixth year. And take a look at the company he's keeping already. Tom Osborne, number one, yet ahead of Paterno, Slocum, and his nemesis, Steve Spurrier. Can he get it done over a test of time? I think so. But people down here have been all over him because of his inability to beat one team, the Florida Gators. But I don't see anybody else beating him. And you know what? Yesterday, Jim Donnan gave Coach Fulmer a heck of a compliment. He said, look, look at the record of... We have a holding on the offense. The 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Look at the record of Tom Osborne against Barry Switzer in the Big 8. Osborne could never beat Switzer back then. Look at the record of Bobby Bowden against Jimmy Johnson and some of those great Miami teams. They struggled in the big game, Florida State. 
Bill Former going through the same thing. It just takes time. Well, he just happens to be coincidentally in the same division of the same conference of the team of the 90s. Second down and one from the 45. Manning will let it fly. Pump fake underneath. And it is complete. Number 84 with the reception. That's Neil Johnson. Now tonight on CBS, beginning at 8 Eastern time, it's America's night of television. Don't miss Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman, followed by early edition. Then it's Walker, Texas Ranger. That's all coming up this evening. And Gus, I don't want to let that occasion of a tight end catching a pass for Tennessee pass by without noting that that's the first one of the season for a Tennessee tight end. Neil Johnson, 6'4", freshman. 3-13 and counting. Manning going the distance. Play action. Looking. Great throw to Taylor Spice. At the 31-yard line. But talk about arm strength. Yep. He threw that ball all the way on the other side of the field. And he brought him back away from the defender. And here's what they have left. If they beat Georgia today. They go on the road to Alabama, who's suddenly fairly mortal, right? Because they lose to Kentucky last week. And then they've got to run the table in the conference, South Carolina, Mississippi, Arkansas, Kentucky, and then over Thanksgiving weekend, a CBS game with Vanderbilt. Oh, Woody Woodhoffer and the Commodores go, really upset go, last week go. with that 7-6 to six loss to LSU. Had an opportunity to tie the game, but uh, couldn't do it. Missed the extra point. Here's a quick strike, and it is caught. David Martin, and Martin down inside the 10. Everybody catching passes today. For Tennessee. He's a true freshman out of Norfolk, Virginia. Gain of 20. And for Georgia, after this game today, they'll be at Vanderbilt. Always a tough defense at Vandy. Followed by Kentucky at home. Florida in that big game in Jacksonville. They call it the world's largest cocktail party. Followed by Auburn at home. And then they finish off the season against Ole Miss and Georgia Tech on the road. Now, you experienced that cocktail yes, party a year ago, didn't you? Uh, yes, I called the Georgia-Florida game. Different team between then and now. The fans in Athens would be really pleased with uh, what Coach Donovan has put on the field. Yeah, I think there's nothing but upside for this Georgia football team. So the dead ball, false start on the offense, be five yards in and there's Coach Donnan, and he said that he really values his experience at Marshall because he didn't have the top talented athlete. He had to work on teaching technique on a regular basis, and now coming to a place like Georgia where he can get some of the best athletes in the country because he knows how to teach technique, his team can be better. I'll tell you one thing, though. At Division I AA, he had some of the top talent, not compared to the top 1A, but he had it going at Marshall. Here's Stevens again, trying to get across the field, and he's running east and west. And he is tackled at the 15, Cap Bailey with the tackle. Don't forget NASDAQ College Football next Saturday, next Saturday, starting at 12 Eastern time, Miami, Boston College. Two teams that both need to step up and get a big win, followed by Florida, the number one team in the nation, against the number eight team, Auburn. Not a lot of people talking about Damian Craig, but he gets better and better every time I see him on television. Did two of his games last year. Was really impressed with his athletic ability. The Gus is becoming more and more a pocket passer that can also beat you with some exciting athletic ability. Manning again. Play action. Looking in the end zone. Dumps it off. Touchdown. Jared Gettman. Sophomore wide receiver out of Denver, Florida. hit almost every receiver possible this afternoon. Talking about seeing the entire field. He's over 300 yards yet again, but this time he did a little bit differently. He let the game come to him, which I really like. They will be a better team. That was my David Martin. Complimenting David Martin. Extra point is good. 
Peyton like what David Martin did, which was to clear the zone and allow Derek Edmonds to come back underneath. You see how he looks the safety away? That's just a poised quarterback. Throws the ball underneath to Edmonds. And the talented sophomore takes it the rest of the way. The Heisman Trophy favorite has hit 11 different receivers today. 38-13, a minute 44 to go here in Knoxville. And it's all Tennessee. Line drive kick. And it will be picked up by Patrick Kaz at the 13-yard line. He'll skip ahead and get up to the 25. Patrick Bass, in his spare time, plays baseball for the Florida Marlins. He's an outfielder. Matter of fact, they pay for his education. He's 218 this season. He better hit better than 218 if he wants to keep getting paid. <laughs> he get a lot of A.B. That's what they say. On the other side, the captain <laughs> congratulating his teammates. 31 of 40, another 300-yard game. His fifth straight, this time 343 yards, four touchdowns to 11 different well, receivers he's thrown the ball to. And you ask if this young man is legit. And talking to Coach Cutcliffe, Peyton, it has concerned him a bit that he's been criticized about being not a legitimate player. We'll talk about that right after this. back to our previous conversation about Peyton Manning it's really concerned him lately about some of the things that people are saying about him right he's standing next to Pat Washington the wide receivers coach and just look how much fun they're having and that's what it's all about one of the reasons he came back this year I think the whole Florida thing is overblown it's over it's done with let's see what happens the rest of the season the young man though is five straight 300 yard games a lot of people don't throw for 300 yards five times in a career Although there is a young man in this conference by the name of Tim Couch, who coming into today had 21 touchdown passes to Peyton Manning's 12. We had a chance to see him last year. He is night and day. As he ran the option. Uh-huh. But night and day in Hal Mummy's new offense. It's really fun to watch. they have already named the street that the stadium is on in Lexington. Hal Mummy Pass. <laughs> That's how much they think of Coach Mummy. Washington rolling. Michigan State, they remain undefeated, pounding Indiana today. Coach Saban really got it going in East Lansing. A&M, keeping pace. Kansas State over Missouri. Big 12 race wide open right now with Nebraska. Notre Dame, it looks like they'll pick up their second win of the season. Bobo. Out of time. He'll force it up and out of bounds. Now, the executive producer of CBS Sports is Terry Ewert. The coordinating producer of NASDAQ College Football on CBS is Craig Silver. Today's game was produced by Bob Dekas and all the great pictures by our director, Mike Arnold. The coordinating producer of College Football Today is Eric Mann. College Football Today was directed by Bob Martina, and the associate director of today's game was Kenny Mack. I like that. They're just having fun now. They've been under so much pressure with that Florida loss. Under a minute to go. Here's Bailey now on the screen. Jack Bailey splitting, and he found the seam and advances up to the 45-yard line, and Mike Bobo gets up slowly. Oh, he took a huge hit. That was a jailbreak on that screen. The offensive lineman turned him loose quickly. Wow, he had trouble getting up. Never say die in the minds of this Georgia Bulldogs team. 41 seconds to go, down 38-13. They've got to learn how to win a big game. They're not there yet. Here's Bobo stepping up in the end zone. And he had a receiver open. That was Brown, Larry Brown, but he overthrows it. Larry Brown had gotten behind Steven Johnson that time. Doesn't look like a basketball player, does he, Gus? He's a big huh? guy. Very big fella. I, I like Three him at weak side, SEC. weak side rebounder. <laughs> he's mine. Your pick. I'll tell you what, if he's in there, if you're wise, you don't go down there. Out of Decatur. Well, 
I do all you want, though. Better believe it. You know what I mean? It's crazy. You can't have a new t-shirt. Are you done? Long day at the office for the Tennessee offensive line, but a very productive day. Here's Bobo now, once again, throwing. All day to pass, taking his time all day. And we're going to hold it until he's coming up, and Bobo will be stopped. He's and that's Lloyd pushing Bobo down. D'Angelo Lloyd, a true freshman. 6'6", 220, a lot of room for him to grow. <laughs> so getting on the fellows on the bench, lose some weight. That's Robinson. <laughs> I was just seeing you, Deron. I swear I was. There's some more. Look at these fellows, huh? Check them out. They have not missed many meals. That's one thing they got to cut out. That's they had four of those unsportsmen like last week, three or four more today. There's going to come a day where that's going to cost them a football game if they're not careful. And there's Little. That's the air out of my nose is up. It's a shame he's not cut up or anything. <laughs> He says he's a pretty accomplished cook. You know. He can cook a steak with anybody. He loves cooking steak, being his teammate and roommate out looking. Two linebackers. We got down the practice field. You said, you think he's really 247? I said, God, take a closer look. I'll tell you what. <laughs> he's every bit. and some. Yeah, he's like an anvil. Under nine seconds to go, Mike Bobo, short drop, small, he better get out of bounds, and he does. And the clock runs out, and that will be it. Oh, 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 oh. The Tennessee Volunteers have moved to four and one on the season, and they knock off Georgia 38 to 13, a really solid win. Phil Fulmer in the ball. Bobo and Manning shaking hands. A lot of mutual respect among these SEC players. 